All right, Shalom. This is the brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and the sincere salutation to Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. This is Micah chapter 2 and verse 10, and it reads, Arise ye and depart. For this is not your rest Because it is polluted It shall destroy you Even with the sore destruction And through the spirit I was just riding and, and meditating Through the spirit You know listening to brothers lessons You know And um, one common theme through the spirit That the Lord constantly reminds us of In one way shape form or fashion Is that this is not our rest You know I was just meditating um, As I was driving through the spirit That it's supposed to hurt you know there are times when, you know, the Lord gives you this comfort in the spirit, you know, but it doesn't it doesn't um, come without its fair share of chastisement. And that's the way I'll put it through the spirit. You know, you go. We call it highs and lows, peaks and valleys on this journey. All right. But those valleys are important. Those low points in this in this in this journey. I won't even say in the truth, but these low points that we go through in this journey is necessary. All right. Because. We have to be reminded of this, you know, we have to be reminded that this is not our rest, even those who know this. All right. Matter of fact, I want to grab this. I believe it's in Proverbs. Um, all right. Here it is in uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 3. You know, I'll start at 2 and it reads, it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men and the living will lay it to his heart. All right. And, and this society is full of the lust of the flesh. And a huge part of the lust of the flesh is that um, there's a constant distraction. Right. What well, the Lord inserts in our lives, certain high points and low points to keep us refreshed, to keep us balanced so that we don't lose uh, lose footing, so to speak, on this journey through the spirit. All right. That's why it says it's better to go into the house of mourning. All right. And this is why the Lord put certain situations in your way and in your path to remind you that this is not your rest. How off. And it's OK. It's OK that it hurts sometimes. It's, it's OK that it's frustrating. It's OK, you know, that you vexed, you know, beyond belief. You know, it's OK that some of your days are bad just off of meditating on how terrible, you know, the society is that you're surrounded in. And it's supposed to hurt that way. You know, especially when you're coming off a, a, a one of those good days in the spirit where the Lord just got you feeling on top of the world. When you lose that feeling, you start to worry about why you lost the feeling, not realizing that the Lord is just balancing you out. And that's why the scriptures constantly remind us that this is not our rest. And it reminds us to go into the, uh, the house of mourning. And sometimes that is is um, that is something that happens through trials and tribulations that we go through to keep us balanced now verse 3 reads sorrow is better than laughter for by the sadness of the countenance the heart is made better all right so we go through certain situations we go through certain good days and bad days so to speak to keep us continually balanced in this truth man but those for those low moments, if you will, it's a reminder that this is not our rest. It's for us to continue to be reminded that their lays, their lies, better heavens and better earths, you know, that we are seeking, you know, and this place is easy to um, get comfortable. All right. It's very easy to get comfortable in this society. All right. And this is why the Lord gives us highs and lows, even in this truth. You know, we're comforted ultimately by the truth. You know, but there are certain situations that we go through while in this truth that keeps us reminded of this not being our rest. All right. Verse four reads, the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. And this is why the Lord uh, constantly tells us this, these things. All right. To mortify your members. All right. To uh, stay vigilant, to say uh, stay sober, meaning spiritually sober. Why? Because. You're you're sitting in a in the midst of um, comfort. All right. You're sitting in the midst of carnal lust and being in that environment. It's always tempting. It's a it's a never ending temptation of the flesh. Now, there are moments where you have 
um, high points in this truth where, you know, the Lord just puts a beautiful spirit on you that day. And you just nothing can really interrupt that good feeling that the Lord's giving you in the spirit. But they're going to be low points and those low points, you know, um, are reminders that this is not our rest. It's a reminder that our heart is in the house of mourning. Even if you have certain days that are better than others, we're still ultimately in the house of mourning because this is not our rest. You know, our, 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 our Lord is not in rulership. You know, our father's name is not known and renowned in the earth. All right. We're still under the captivity of Esau. And what Esau is very crafty at is allowing a lot of carn, uh, carnal lust to distract people from where the world actually is. And the Lord chastises us through certain situations to keep us mindful of this, man. And it doesn't always stay. Uh, you, you're not always going to have, um, you're not going to, I'll say it like this. You're not always going to stay at that low point. However, when you are in those low points, it's an important um, point to realize that it's, it's more than likely the Lord balancing you out. And it's a continual reminder that we're not in our rest. All right. And this is why the Lord gives us, you know, certain uh, situations that happen, certain uh, mental battles through the spirit. All of these things are a reminder that you're not in your rest. All right. Verse uh, four again reads the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. But the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. All right. And this is why the scriptures talk about wisdom being too high for a fool. A lot of our people have been deceived. All right. As the scriptures say, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the ways of the wicked seduces them. And they have become fools through the distractions and the lust of the flesh. And it's easy to slip into that kind of darkness, especially in Babylon the Great in a time period that we're in. All right, right now, Esau is flooding the market with distractions and carnal pleasures as he gets people uh, ready all right, to transition into that, that uh, MOTB system. So he's enticing more and more as we get closer to the end because he's about to make that move, that transition into that absolute control over the minds of the people. This is why the scriptures call this place the valley of the shadow of death. It doesn't mean that you die uh, expeditiously. It doesn't mean that you die quickly, speedily, as the scriptures say in Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. But you do die, all right, even if it's a slow death, even if it's, it's the, the, the death of your spirit, man. Given, and I don't mean literal death, but I mean just losing, you know, uh, your soul in this place by being drowned with carnal lust. And that's why the Lord balances us out, man. You know, so that, you know, you're not over righteous, you're not over wicked. And the trials and tribulations that you go through is to maintain that balance that you need to uh, to maneuver through this place, through the spirit and power of the by Shemal Shad. It's necessary. It's extremely necessary through the spirit. You know, I was just meditating on that as I was driving. Because, you know, again, through the spirit, you come off of these high points in the truth where you just feel good about the spirit of the Lord and the Lord just you know, got you on one of those days and then you may come uh, to a low point and it may uh, it may spark. It may be started through a financial situation. It may be started through just something not going your way that week and it may spiral down that certain path. But through the spirit, it's a good thing. It's supposed to hurt. All right. It's supposed to be a reminder that this is not our rest. And that was something that I was meditating on through the spirit as I was, you know, driving because this place is wicked, man. All right. This place is wicked. And a part of the Lord protecting us is putting us in situations where we don't have um, the license to live in excess to a point where we destroy ourselves. If that makes sense. There are certain obstacles the Lord puts in our place just to remind us. All right. Where we are in society through the spirit. And these are necessary Journeys. These are necessary obstacles in the path of our journey. This is why the scriptures call this a straight gate. And this is why people don't this is why people don't uh, choose this path. Or I'll say this is why people don't look at this path as profitable. All right. Because they don't want the, the hard road. All right. They don't want the road where your spirit is uh, is profiting, you know, because they don't understand or see any profit in a spiritual growth. 
All right. Matthew 7 and 13 reads, enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. And this is the reality because the straight gate has a, a component that continues to remind you that this place ain't la la land. This place ain't uh, built for comfort. All right. It's built for growth in the spirit for those who take the straight gate and it's built for destruction for those who refuse to. All right. And this is just through the spirit and part of Yahweh by Shemal Shah, something I was meditating on. All right. Because the highs and the lows are both necessary. You know, the scriptures talk about a false balance being an abomination to the heavenly father. And we have to continue to meditate upon that, especially when times get tough, because we're going to enter into some tough times. All right. But through the spirit, it's a necessary part of the journey. All right. Through the scriptures, throughout the scriptures, we have these moments in the truth where um, especially particularly let's go to James. All right. And James, it talks about how uh, this journey will make sure that in the spirit we lack nothing. All right. So we'll be whole and complete concerning the spirit. Now, it doesn't mean that our journey is going to be easy. All right. But what it does mean is that the Lord is doing this for our profiting, the good moments and the bad moments, so to speak, you know, because none of it is uh, bad uh, per se. But there are certain um, points of adversity. All right. Rich, uh, which let me grab this James one and two. And it reads, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And that patience cannot be developed, all right, through just knowing these scriptures. It has to be developed through knowing these scriptures and applying them to the obstacles that you find yourself in through the spirit of Pavi by Shemal Shai. That is the balance. That is why you have the, the, the knowledge was given to us through the spirit, not just to, to teach, but to apply most importantly to our lives. And how do you do that without adversity? How do you do that without moments uh, of difficulty, positions of difficulty? This is a necessary component, but it's also a reminder of where we are. All right. That we're not in our rest. That even though we know what we know through the spirit and we have our daily bread, that this is not our rest. And this is why we look forward to new heavens and new earths. And sometimes, and a lot of times, I'll say that, the Lord reminds us personally. You'll hear a brother's lesson, you know, you hear the apostles, you know, but there are certain situations the Lord puts in your path to remind you that this is not your rest. And this is a necessary component to our journey through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemal Shai. We have to go through this part of the, the journey. All right. In second, Edges the seventh chapter it talks about the city that's set on a, a, a hill or a wide place. If you don't go through the narrow, how can you uh, inherit the wide? How can you inherit that city that's on a hill? And these moments of difficulty are those reminders that we're still in a fight. As it says in second, Edges the seventh chapter, this is the condition of the battle that you may have moments of um, of laughter you know you know you may have moments that are uh good days per se but it will be mixed with moments of adversity and obstacles and sometimes those are situational sometimes they're physical sometimes they're mental but it's all meant to not only make you stronger but to remind you that this is not home as much as you would like rest this is not it and this is what the Lord does through the spirit for our profiting. Lord willing, we're part of that number. All right. One thing I. I one of the scriptures that always stuck with me in uh, in Hebrews was this one. Um, Hebrews five and eight. All right. And it reads, you know what? Let's start at. Yeah, I'll start at eight. All right. And it reads, though he were a son. And this is talking about Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. So the Lord, the Lord learned obedience through the things he suffered, not just by knowing. All right. Not just being by just uh, being the, the only begotten. But through those adversities, he was able to prove himself and be refined. All right. 
to go through that that sacrifice ultimately for us to be reconciled back to the heavenly father all right but it was also him being made perfect all right matter of fact the scriptures tell you that in hebrews as well all right let's get this this is uh hebrews 2 and 10 all right and it reads for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Now, that is very important. The captain of our salvation, Lord willing, we're part of that number was made perfect, not through uh, just being wise, per se, or just having knowledge, but through the things which he suffered. Now, we're not on the same level of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. However, our cups are similar in a sense that we are all going through the straight gate. Lord willing, we're a part of that number. That's one of the most important parts of our journey is the straight gate. And by definition, it's a position of difficulty, which means there are going to come times in our life, in our mo moments in our life, even as we get into the hour of temptation, which is going to be the ultimate obstacle um, for those who are um, of that number. But the Lord is going to give them the uh, spirit to get through it. But it's supposed to hurt. You know, it's supposed to feel difficult. It's not supposed to feel easy. It wouldn't be suffering if it didn't. All right. And this is perfectly normal for it to be a uh, uh, painful situations. All right, uncertain situations, situations that are stressful at times. It's, it's supposed to be that way. All right. It doesn't make you uh, different because you feel like that. It's normal to feel that way because we are in the flesh. But the scriptures are a reminder of why we are suffering these things. The scriptures are also left as a record and an example of those who stood stiffly in those situations where they were stressed and the reward that they received and the understanding that they were not forsaken even in those moments of uh, so-called weakness. And we're, we are to keep that in mind when we go through our own personal situations. And that's why this is a reminder, all right, in our life con continually, consistently, that we're not in our rest. All right. So Lord willing, this was edifying with that. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yahshua Allah, and a sincere salutation to all Yuakim. Who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aquath who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.